So look, it's Kwanzaa week, the week between Christmas and New Year's, and the courts are all closed. And I was like, what are we going to talk about? And I was like, wait, 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 wait. I know what we could talk about. Documentaries. Who does not love a true crime documentary? Oh, I love a true crime documentary. As long as no children were harmed in the making of the documentary. But look, we need to talk about my very, very first documentary. The very first one I did when I was just a baby gossip. Child, I remember it like it was yesterday. But because I'm remembering, I'm just going off the top of my head. Don't hold me to nothing. I'm about to tell you the story of the state of California versus Cinnamon Brown. You remember Cinnamon Brown? If you know Cinnamon Brown just off the top of your head, you are old school true crime. Also, you probably need a moisturizer and to get to bed earlier because you know wrinkles. Anyway, so look. This dude named David Brown had a daughter, Cinnamon Brown. Little Cinny, he used to call her. Oh, that's such a cute name. I don't know why anybody would name their child Cinnamon, but he named his child Cinnamon. And, Cindy, and David was married to Linda. So Linda and David had a nice home in the suburbs. Oh, and David had a type when it came to women. But let's let's first roll your mind back and get a picture of David. David had money because he was like a computer something or other. He had some cash in the bank. He was amazingly unattractive, pocked up face, tight curly hair. Not that there's anything wrong with curly hair. Curly hair, flat face, kind of sickly, kind of like... No regular woman would really be into him. So he used to go after young girls and poor girls. Oh, he's he used to be in the trailer parks. He was in the low-income housing. Any place you could find young women or poor women, he wanted the hottest of them all. Because he was like, I don't have to be good. Look at y'all. I got cash. And so he got himself a nice little um wife named Linda. And he wifed up Linda when Linda was still a teenager. Because, of course, he did. So he marries Linda. I just burn my mouth. Linda instantly becomes a stepmother to his young daughter, Cinnamon. So Cinnamon and Linda and David are a nice, happy little family. And then Linda was like, ooh, my younger sister, Patty, she's having some trouble at home. I mean, I don't, my mom and them, you know, they don't have money to feed her. And David is like, Pat, uh, let Patty come and live with us. So now they're a family of four. Isn't that delightful? It's Linda and her sister, Patty, and David and his daughter, Cinnamon. And everyone is living happily ever after. Only here's the thing. David is a scumbag. So David is married to Linda, but he's still looking at other women. And all the ladies in the house are like, well... That's just David because David was with a constant stream of like brainwashing. I'm the best. I love you. Nobody is better than me. Then Linda gets pregnant, his wife, and she has a baby, little Crystal. Also, now he's surrounded by women. This is his favorite thing, especially young women. Only here's the thing. His beautiful wife, Linda, turned 23, and that meant she was officially too old for him. Even though he was fat and pockmarked and disgusting, he was just like, oh no, I could probably do better than this. And so he began playing this game with his daughter and his sister-in-law called How Can We Kill Linda? Yeah, that was an official game. He used to tell them all the time. You know how Linda's always stopping the fun. Linda doesn't let us stay out at night. Linda gets mad when I give you girls beer. It's so ridiculous. And David instituted a game in the house that they would call cinnamon kisses. And that is where he would kiss his daughter on the lips and uh, Patty would stand there and count. One, one thousand, two, one thousand. And whoever backed off first lost. Ew. David, you're kissing your daughter. I, why is this again? Okay. So David is having an inappropriate relationship with his daughter, though not full essay, but just a constant study of Linda would come in and break up the cinnamon kisses game. And they were like, oh, I can't believe Linda is killing all of our joy. Every time they got together, every time they went out, every time they did anything, David would initiate a game of what are all the ways that we could kill Linda? And so Cinnamon and Patty would play this game. Oh, we could bring home a shark and put it in the bathtub. And when she took a bath, it, it would attack her. It was a silly, hilarious little game. Okay. So one night, David was like, the time has come. Obviously, um, Linda is really after me. I think she's going to kill me. And the girls were like, oh, no, not you, David. You're so wonderful. You kiss us and let us drink beer and do all the things. And he's like, I know. But you know how Linda is. She's always exhausted with the new baby. She's killing all of our joy and excitement. 
whatever am I going to do? So he kept talking to his daughter and talking to his sister-in-law and talking to them and talking to them. And finally he said to them, you know what? Someday you might come home and I might not be here. And they were like, no, no. So he said, um, we're going to have to kill her. And one night he gives Cinnamon a handful of pills and gives her a gun, points her in the direction of the bedroom where Linda is sleeping with her young baby. And Cinnamon pulls the trigger and shoots her stepmother in the chest, nearly killing her, but not all the way. And so she's screaming. She's hysterical. The baby is crying. Cinnamon is very upset. And Linda is like, um, uh, Patty, the, the younger sister is like, did you do it? And Cinnamon's like, I shot her, but I don't think she's dead. And Patty is like, dang, okay, got to go finish her off. So Patty goes upstairs and shoots her own blood sister to death, finishing off the job that David started. And so then uh, Cinnamon is very upset, very sick. She throws up. She runs into the backyard. Patty picks up the baby to comfort her and calls 911 and says, I don't know what happened. My sister is shot. Oh, my goodness. Then David comes home from his outing. And David is like, oh, what happened? Oh, my goodness. Someone killed my wife. The police do a full investigation. They take Linda to the hospital. She's dead. And David and Cinnamon and Patty and the baby are all there living in the house. And so the cops are like, so wait, we need to investigate this entire situation. And poor Cinnamon confesses. She's like, I took some drugs and I wrote a note and um, I shot my stepmother. Oops, sorry. So she goes off to prison. She's sentenced to like 25 to life, even though she's only like a 14 year old. Her father was like, Thanks so much, Cinny. You saved my life. You're the best. You know she was going to kill me, right? It was going to be terrible. So Cinnamon covers for him and goes to jail for a couple of years. He's like, listen, you're a juvenile. This is not going to be a big deal. Everything she could have that the prison would allow her to have, the California Youth Authority, uh, California Youth Authority would allow Cinnamon to have, she had. So when they said the kids could get color, color TVs, she got a color TV. She had all the jail phone calls. Her commissary is full. And the cops were like, something in the milk ain't clean. This story is not adding up. How is it that uh, this 14-year-old randomly shoots and kills her stepmother while high on drugs, even though prior to this she was an A student and never really used drugs before? We don't know what's going on, but they kept working her and working her, and periodically they would come and talk to her, and she would be like, nope, it was all my idea. I killed my father. I killed my stepmother. One day her father comes to visit her, and he's like, listen, I don't know how, you know, I, I can't come around as much anymore. Um, and she's like, well, why, Daddy? And he says, well, Patty has gone and had a baby. And so, you know, it's taking a lot more of my time and energy to um, take care of Patty and the baby. And Cindy is like, wait, what? Who? She had a baby. She doesn't have a boyfriend. He's like, oh, yeah. Um, me and Patty, we got married. Patty was maybe 18 years old, 17 years old at the time of the crime, 18 or 19, when she marries her sister's husband and has his baby. So now young Patty is living in the lap of luxury. They have a beautiful house and Cinnamon is in jail. Cinnamon is like, well, hold the doggone phone. How come I'm locked up in the California Youth Authority and y'all over here living, y'all going to the beach, you have a baby, you living a life and I have no life. I'm Now I'm 15, 16 years old and I'm still stuck here. Uh, hello, police, Let me, I, I need to talk to you about my daddy. So Cinnamon is like, um, police, listen, I have not told you the whole truth. Let me tell you the whole truth about what happened. So she tells the whole truth about what happened. And they were like, right, 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 right. Only it's been a couple of years and we don't have all the evidence. So we're going to wire you up and you call your father and ask him to come and visit. And when he comes, we need you to get him on tape doing some sort of confession to this crime. So Cindy is like, bet. So David comes to visit. He's like, hey, Cindy, how you doing? And I can kiss you as much, as much as I want because that Nino Linda is not around to stop us. She's like, daddy, can we talk about what happened that terrible night? He's like, yeah, it was really awful. But listen, there's no use in all of us going to jail. You could just do a little piece of time and it's all going to be okay. But Cindy, I love you very much. And she's like, okay, daddy, fine. And so she makes her father, David, believe I'm not going to say anything. 
Meanwhile, the cops have the whole situation on tape. As soon as they listen to the tape, they're like, okay, we got this, boys. Let's go. So they go and they lock up both Patty and David for the murder of Linda Brown. And the kids go into foster care. Hang on. So now, Cinnamon is in the California Youth Authority, but so is Patty. Patty, it, Cinnamon is now 16, 17. Patty is only a few years older, like 18 or 19, married with a baby. Oh, so the two women are in, in CYA together. That's the California Youth Authority for those who are not in California. And first, because Cinnamon has been there a couple years. Oh, everybody knows old Cinny, and they love her. She's a good student. She's an honor roll student in prison doing the best she's got lots of friends she's actually having the best life she's ever lived because for her entire life she's lived under the influence and brainwashing of her father now it's been a couple of years she's outside of his influence and she can think clearly she can think on her own and she fully understands that killing her stepmother was wrong now patty comes to prison and patty is like what I i'm used to living on like the hundred thread the thousand thread count sheets and uh soft mattresses and pillows what what is this entire situation and Cinnamon was like, huh, you don't like it, girl. Well, I've been in here for two, three years while you out here having babies and married to my daddy. I guess you my sister-in-law slash stepmother now. What is the what is this? So Patty is like, I'm really sorry about that whole plot. So the two women make up. Cinnamon and Patty are like, you know what? We are doing time, and this is really, it's our fault, but it's David who all those years kept talking about it, talking about it, put it up, putting us up to this. So um, we're going to tell the popo that we're going to testify against him. So they get together, and they test, they decide they're going to testify against David. So they sit down, and they lay out the whole entire story. All right, cops, this is what happened. A, B, C, one, two, three. So David's trial is coming up. David realizes that his daughter and his wife are going to testify against him. And so he's like, okay, you know what I'm going to do? Um, I'm going to get my buddy over here in jail to a, who's getting out soon. I'm going to have him arrange a murder to kill the two detectives. Um, newsflash, David, if those two cops go away, other cops will come and fill in their places. But that's okay. So the uh, buddy from jail calls him up and after he gets out. He calls him up. David, listen, you know the cops was on the line, right? Davey, listen, listen, dude, my dude, um, those two cops you wanted dead, they dead, they gone. So Dave's like, oh man, thank you so much. Oh, I really owe you one. I really appreciate it. And the buddy from jail's like, ah, no problem, anything for a friend. Cut to the next day, the cops are like, surprise, David, we're still alive. And he's like, rats, foiled again. So, I mean, that's probably not a quote, but you get the general idea. So David goes to trial and both his daughter and Cinnamon testify against him, telling the whole story. He convinced us all he ever did was talk about, we got to get rid of Linda. We got to get rid of Linda. And so, yep, we unalived Linda on his say so. And it was only at the trial that Cinnamon realized, oh shoot, that night that they gave me the pills, I got sick and I threw up. The only thing that saved my life that night was the fact that I threw up. My father had it planned so that I would kill his wife, take these pills and die myself. And then he could marry his wife's little sister who was a teenager. Also keep in mind, at the time of her death, Linda Brown was only 23. At 23, she had aged out of being married to this mama Luke. What? Chow. So David gets convicted and sentenced to life in prison where he stays. He was sentenced in the late eighties, like 89, 90. Because this story happened in 88 when I was in high school and he died in prison in 2014. Meanwhile, Linda and Cinnamon did their time. I think one did seven years, one did five years, and then they got out and went on to lead happy, productive lives. Here's the other gag on this whole story. Crystal, uh, Linda's baby, has grown up and is just out here in the world, and people on Reddit have found her. She's out here doing beautiful artwork. If you Google Crystal Brown, I think it's Crystal with a K, but please don't harass her because I'm sure she's had enough trouble in her life. Um... She's done some beautiful artwork. She's just out here in these streets living her best life. So look, that was my first time. My very, very first true crime. What was your first true crime? What's the first one you remember that really, really happened? That and anything by Ann Rule. And part of me is like, mm, 
I feel like it's only a modern thing that people go crazy and kill their families. Turns out, no, that's been happening since forever. Oh, I guess Cain and Abel. Oh, was Cain and Abel the first true crime? That's so interesting. Maybe we could do biblical true crimes or not because I'm a heathen and super not into reading the Bible. Anyway, like this video, subscribe to the channel. I hope you have a great day and I will talk to you later. Bye.